Yeah. yeah. You wanna pray up or here? Yeah, okay, I get this. Bismillah. Bismillah. Yeah. Started already. This yeah. Good, right? She's not in. Good, 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 good. Yes, please. Barakallah fi. So, Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah, God the Almighty, and may peace and blessings of Allah, God the Almighty, be upon prophets. Uh, what do you know about Islam? Um, well, and, and feel free, right? In Islam, we are very free. Yeah. Yeah. We maintain respect. I should respect you, you respect me. Yeah. We are brothers and sisters. Don't ever feel, you understand? Don't ever feel like, be yourself. Inshallah, very brief, on point, and precise. You listen, and then if you have any question, ask. The first point is, what is Islam? I will start from there. Islam means submission to the oneness of Allah, of God the Almighty, obedience to His commandments, doing what he has ordered and abstaining from what he has forbidden. So, submission to his oneness, obedience to his commandments, and disassociating yourself from holytheism and its people. If you submit by believing in Allah, God the Almighty, who created you, and you obey his commandments, and you disassociate from worshipping the creation, whether angels, whether prophets, whether idols, whether presidents, whether kings, then you are, you, are, you are called a Muslim who is on the right path to acquiring peace within yourself, peace within your family, peace within the community and society, peace within the world, peace when you die, and peace on the day of judgment. When God will be saving believers who did good righteous deeds from hellfire, admitting them in paradise. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. I did good. <laughs> so that is Islam. Submission, mm -hmm. obedience, and disassociating, which means you, you distance yourself from anything else called God, because there is only this one God is Allah in Islam. Mm. It also means that we don't believe in more than one God. Trinity, the God of the yani God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus never taught that. Mm. Moses never taught that. Abraham never taught that. Muhammad never taught that. There is only Allah, one God. Right? Point number two. Islam is the faith. Who are we then? We are called Muslims. They call us Mos with a bit of six, but we are Muslims, which means people or individuals who submit, who believes in God, submit to his oneness, obey his commandments. You understand that? So Islam is the faith. Muslims are they? Are the followers of Islam? Point number three. I just say that we worship God. Right? Which God is this? Who is this God? 
simply. You can understand Allah through his words that he revealed in Quran. I'm going to select one verse, one chapter. Allah, the Almighty, says, Qul, say Muhammad, who Allah, he God, Allah, Ahad, is the one. He is only one God. So anything extra is not qualified for to be God. Anybody who claims that I'm God, I'm a part of God, I share divinity with God. Allah Somad, this God is a self-sufficient master. Witness all his creation. All his creation stands in need of him. But he does not need anything from anybody. He is the giver. He gives life. He takes life. Look, he is the one who disposes all affairs. He is the one who brings winter to summer, summer to spring, you know, night to day. This is one God. That is your God, your Lord. So he is only one God. He is He is independent. We are not independent. We are dependent. You want to have some food, you want to have some clothes on us. I go to the bathrooms, when I sleep, when I go to school, when I do this, when I make money, we are hungry, we are sick, when I go to the hospital. Allah, God the Almighty, is a summit. Independent. He is the giver, the all giving. Okay? All of us, all his creation are, we are dependents of God. We are in need. Another quality of God, Lam Yalid Walam Yulad. He begets not, nor was he begotten. Allah, God the Almighty, doesn't have father, mother, grandfather. And Allah is not a human or an animal to have children. That is de- that is degrading God. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine the story of God, you know, a, a one woman, a human being becoming pregnant and ca- carrying God in her stomach? Mm-hmm. A lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Okay? Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor was he begotten. And this God has no comparison and has no co-equal, co-equalness. So anything that we imagine of is not like God. Is not like Allah. There is nothing like unto Allah in power, in mighty. You understand that? In everything. He is the Almighty, the All Powerful. All perfection and completeness are His. We are created, and Allah God has given us some knowledge, but we do not have all knowledge. Allah has given us eyes to see, but we cannot see everything. God has given us brain, but we cannot comprehend and understand everything. Our life is limited. How long are we going to live in this world? We are not going to last. Even if we go for another 90 years, but one day we're going to die. But Allah is al hayyu al qayyum the ever-living, everlasting. We sleep, right? As a sign of what witness? We get sick and days and days. But Allah, la ta'akuduhu sinatun wa slumber. Does not say Allah. That is weakness. And Allah does not sleep. He is not a human being. You understand that? So that suffices to introduce Allah. You know, it seems that you were born in a Christian home. And I want to give you a few things in Christianity. So I do read Bible. And I don't find any verse, any Bible, whether a Bible is 70, over 70 books or 66 books of Protestant. And I find that books like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? They quote them. I find in the book of Matthew, Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 10, Jesus told Satan that go away, away Satan. Because it's written that you must worship your Lord and serve him alone. Jesus is telling Satan. He would have said serve me. He was never God, Jesus. Moses was never God. Muhammad was never God. Adam was never God. They have made Jesus to be God. We respect Jesus more than any Christian on earth. We respect Jesus more than anybody else because we believe in him. We believe that God sent him. And we also believe and follow him practically. So loving somebody or following somebody does not mean just singing him mm-hmm. and praising him. No. Are you following him? 
You understand that? Yeah. We follow Jesus and Moses and Abraham more than anybody else. We Muslims. More than anybody else. We love him so much. That if you don't believe in Jesus or Moses or Abraham, you are not a Muslim. Right. So that is the introduction of us. I've introduced Islam, Muslims. I've introduced God that we worship. Mm -hmm. How should we worship this God? And what does worshiping God earn us? What does it earn us? What, what, what is the purpose to be achieved by worshiping God, right? This is simple. Islam has the best definition of the word worship. Islam has the best definition of the word worship. How? You know how? Because worship means everything you do or say. From your intention to your words and your actions. If you do or you say or you intend something to please God, whether openly or secretly, that is qualified right, as an act of worship. Do you know that? If you are eating, the source of what you eat, how did you earn it? It should be an act of worship. How you eat, how you sleep, how you walk, how you dress, how you talk, how you socialize, how you support others. We don't just do things on humanitarian ground. We do things because Allah, God, the Almighty, has ordained, has commanded that we should be there for one another. So everything you say, even the way you look at things, should also be qualified as an act of worship. By the way, this is my wife. Sorry for the noise. No, it's okay. Just do your thing. You understand this? So worship, this prayer is an act of worship. Fasting is an act of worship. But how you live with your neighbors, an act of worship. How you talk to people, how you be, how you look at things, what you listen to, what you touch, where you sit, all this should be going to school, to earn education, so that you can get maybe a better job, okay? That will keep you away from trouble, selling drugs and this and this, you understand? So worship in Islam, covers your entire life which means god created you and he requested you for your own benefit to maintain that relationship with him okay you understand that you understand that so worship is beautiful right okay so what do we attain with this three things guidance in this world Number two, forgiveness of your sins. But also it protects you from the punishment on the day of judgment and it earns you one of the best, which is called paradise on the day of judgment. Our life in this world is too short. Too short. That is the reality. We have seen infants die. Some children are dying right here, right? Others live for how long? You know, we, we, we lost some of our cousins in the world. Corona came and swept, you know, how many people. And without Corona, that is nature. We live to die. Mm -hmm. What is going to come? What means after death? So you want to prepare for longer life. Islam is emphasizing on, yes, we live here. Let us, you know, have the best in this world. But do not forget, qualify everything you do to mend your relationship and strengthen your relationship with your creator. Because one day you're going to leave and people will forget you. And you pass by the graves and cemeteries, you say, you know, you don't even care much, right? But there is one who does not forget. It's Allah, God the Almighty. Mend and strengthen your relationship with Him. You understand that? I'm coming towards the end of this introduction. So, who doesn't want to have good life in this world? And who doesn't want a good life in the grave? Once you die and everybody else has abandoned you and nobody visits you, and who doesn't want a good life on the day of judgment? Islam is emphasizing on all those levels of life. This world, grave, and tomorrow here. You cannot achieve that except if you believe in Allah. You try your best with all our weaknesses. I have my weaknesses as a human being. You have your weaknesses here. But we try. Weakness should not deter us, should not keep us away from coming closer to our Creator. And that is the most beautiful teaching and message of Islam. Your relationship, your private and personal relationship with your creator. Because you came from him 
and unto him you shall be returned. Mm-hmm. Go until there. So few other things having explained that. Righteousness, goodness is encouraged in Islam. It is called al-ma'ruf, al-khayr, al-salihat. Try your best to do good. Try your best to be pious. Do good, right? And evilness in Islam is rejected. Righteousness leads to, that is a way to God. And evil or vices or sinning is a way of Satan. God does not love people to behave like that. So Satan or devil is our enemy. Okay? Allah, God tells us that treat him as an enemy. Because devil wants to harm you and he wants to mislead you and he works so hard, harder than any human being on earth. He want to have such a big and a large group to accompany him to help her on the day of judgment. You don't want to be punished. Allah has given us every chance and one that chance is Al-Islam. So Islam has five pillars. The first one is testimony, shahada to Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasul to testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, only one God. None has that right. And Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah. Now, any Jewish who comes to Islam is not leaving Moses to Islam. Any Christian who comes to Islam is not leaving Jesus. You are coming to believe in all messengers in the most authentic and correct way. Because in, 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 in Judaism, as much as you want to follow Moses, the time of Moses ended by the death of Moses. Allah sent many other prophets after him. We Muslims believe in all these messengers. In Christianity, if you insist on Jesus, we say we Muslims do believe in Jesus. But he was sent to serve at a specific time. And then after Jesus came, Prophet Muhammad as the messenger to all. So why can't you come and believe in Muhammad as the last messenger, but the last means there, were, there was a past and other messengers who came before him. You understand that? Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and then Prophet Muhammad. So when you come to Islam, you are coming to have complete faith in Allah, God the Almighty, and all his messengers. And that makes Islam a true religion and a unique one. Christians believe in Jesus only. I'm the way and truth and life. No one goes to the Father except Alif Musalam. And more Jewish say we follow commandments of Moses. And other people are going to say we only follow Abraham. Others are going to say we only follow Noah. You only when you find that Islam says we believe in Allah and all His messengers. Aman al bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minu. That the messenger and those who believes in Allah believe in Quran, that which was revealed to him, and also all the believers believe in that. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. We said the Haga. We said the Haga. Who is that? We said. That's, that's that brother there. So we are commanded to believe. Kullun amana billahi wa malaikati wa kutubi wa We are all commanded to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers. And we do not separate between the messengers. We do not pick and choose. And that makes Islam to be unique. We do not separate between the messengers. What happens is that when all messengers are mentioned, we say that we hear and we obey. Because the message they brought is from Allah. So pillars of Islam, shahada. You be, you testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and Muhammad is his last messenger. Number two is establishing five prayers every day. Do you know that all messengers were Muslims? How did Moses pray? Do you know how he prayed? He went down, he bowed. Sorry. He stood, bowed, and then prostrated to Allah like this. And Jesus did this. I have a copy of the Bible. Jesus did this in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 36 to 39. He was in a place called Gethsemane. Matthew, the first New Testament of Christian book. He went a little further and fell on his face unto the ground and prayed. 
Christian book. That is how normally they focus on what Jesus said, Lord's Prayer. But again, we say, did Jesus pray to himself if he was God or he prayed to Allah? He prayed to Allah. So how can God pray to another God? You understand that? Did Jesus sleep? Yes. How does God sleep? Was he conceived in the womb of Mary? We say yes. How can God be conceived in somebody's for nine months? Was he born, given back to him? Yes. Sorry. They say that he was even circumcised on the eighth day. We Muslims do that for men. How can... And then they say that they were chasing him, that they stoned him, and, and they crucified him. Had those qualities of God, really? And then he cried, Oh God, Father, why have you forsaken me? God crying to another God for help. Is that God? We say with all that they, they have... Yeah, I mean, those weak yeah, I mean, defects um, that, that uh, they have attributed to Jesus, no. Quran came to purify him and clean him. That he was pure, he was protected from any sin, he never committed any sin like any other prophet. He was a messenger of Allah. And maybe I'm going to help you with this because I'm coming towards the end. Allah, God the Almighty, created human beings in four different forms. And all are unique. Maybe you never thought of this. One, there is a human being who God created without a mother, without a father. How should we call that human being? No mother, no father. That is more unique, right? Yet we don't call him son of God or God. That is Adam, created from the earth. Then God breathed life into him. Allah told him, be, and he was Adam. He never claimed to be the son of God or God. The second one is, this is more unique, more miraculous. Have you ever heard of a pregnant man? And if there is, what is going to happen? All news media, all new media houses will come to it because they want to cover it. It's a big story, right? So think about Adam, Eve, Allah created Hawa from Adam. Yani there is a second one, second human being was created through a father without a mother. Unique, right? From the ribs of Adam. Uh -huh. So how do we call this Hawa? Eve, Hawa. Daughter of who? This is unique, right? Yet, Eve never claimed to be God or daughter of God. Do you understand that? Number three is me and you, who is created through a mother and a father. Miracle. How many people do get married, okay, and they live for 90 years and they don't have a child? They die without having it. And they go to doctors and specialists and they tell them, you are all fine. So the fact that Allah, God the Almighty, created us through a father and mother, and we are the result of that marriage, is a miracle, right? So how should we call ourselves? And number four. Number four is that Allah, having created Adam without mother or father, and having created Eve, Hawa, through a father without a mother, 